So a bit of tidy up on the 6502 emulator. Uh, Super Kaplunk pointed out that one small thing, I think you have a bug in your addressing methods when calculating an extra cycle when passing page boundaries on absolute X, absolute Y, and indirect Y. You are not actually checking if you pass the page boundary, only checking if you are adding values to the addresses greater than 255. Guess your tests aren't robust enough. And I think that might actually be true because I've just been on the look at this and it does look super dodgy. Uh, and what he's pointing out is basically that these addressing modes here uh, take an extra cycle if they cross a page boundary. So in absolute X, you take the address and then you add the X value onto it. And now if a page boundary is crossed, like if every 255 spaces in the memory address, if that's crossed, I think the processor actually has to add on an extra one to the uh, memory address and that takes an extra cycle. So these addressing modes take an extra one. And I did actually put in a test for that and it does actually pass, but I think the test is a bit rubbish and I think the way I've written it is a bit rubbish uh, because I'm testing like if we go exactly uh, 255 over FF and it looks like the code, if I have a look at the code, oh, it's this. Yeah, I've done this thing where I'm just looking at the address, subtracting it and seeing if it's greater than or equal to 255. And if so, I'm saying that it's an extra cycle. But the weird thing about this is, how could it ever be greater than 255 when the X register is only a byte value? So it seems that there's something super dodgy about the way I'm doing that. So that doesn't appear to be the correct way to do that. But the first thing to do really is to not look at this code. Rewrite this test and let's just make sure that it is correct because there's something about this test that isn't right. And I think it's the fact that I'm doing this and I've just happened to have written a piece of code that makes that pass. So I'm gonna adjust this test and possibly these other ones for absolute X, absolute Y and indirect Y and see if we can get them to fail instead of this weird trying to go 255 over let's put it let's put this at the end of the page so yeah it, it was looking we've, we've encoded the address 4402 um, into this what is this test apps so we're testing absolute y here just so happens so instead of that let's encode the address 44 ff and then let's just add one to the y register which should give us 4600 and this is 44ff and then 44ff plus one crosses a page boundary because we expect yeah we expect it to be at 46 so that's the page boundary is th this is the page here these two digits here in the address that's the page and that's the address in the page i suppose you could say i wonder if we run that if that now fails the test and if that's the case then super kaplunk was right and these tests weren't very good. And the answer is, uh -uh. yes, he was right. It doesn't work. So that's already failed a couple of tests now. So that's not good. I don't know if I should put in another test um, or not. We've got plenty of ones that don't cross the page boundary. Okay, I think there's some more of these. Yeah, so this one's very similar. This one's for absolute X. So let's do let's do the same test on this one. 44 ff, we'll just add one to it. And that should become 44 ff plus one is 46. These tests were not good enough. So that's four failing tests now. Where is the one for, there must be one for indirect y. Yeah, when it crosses a page, it must be this one as well. So let's again, what's the deal with this one? Uh, I can't remember how indirect where I work. So what's the next thing after it there? The instruction contains the zero page location of the least significant byte of a 16 bit address. Okay, yeah, so that's the zero page address and then the thing is stored in there. Just confusing me because it happens to have a two in it and this also has a two in it. So yeah, maybe I'll just change that to a three, make that a three, four, like that. It's less confusing, I don't know. Maybe I'll change it to, yeah, or five, it's better. Five, six, that should still pass. I haven't altered the test there, just make sure. Still got four failing tests. Okay, and we can do the same thing here. 
we'll put this one at ff and then we'll add one should give us 81 yep I think that's I think that's it there's only one test for that one so I've altered those tests to make them a bit better and at least I know I've got a test for each one of those yeah there's a, there's at least one test for each one of these so yeah so I made a mess of that before and we can go in and fix that now and all we have to do is fix fix these basically and the way to do it I mean he said actually you did it correctly in the branch shift statement and I didn't do it correctly in this one I really just need to look at the high byte of this address and then just see if it's different to what it was before and I can do that because I've got the address before and I've got the address afterwards so let's just check that they are different so if this works this fixes absolute X if I change this one so I can just mask off um, off and do that that should uh, let's just do it like what's the best way to do this like I could mask off the high byte like that compare it to So that's one way of doing it. So I've just masked off the high byte of each one, and if the high bytes are different, then they have changed page. Um, so let's see if that works, and if it does, let's just see if there's a better way of writing that. Maybe not. LDA. Oops. That didn't fix it. What have I done wrong here? Have I written the test wrong? We ever get in there? We do get in there. Okay, so oh, cycles used is correct. What of what's wrong here? Didn't get the right value. Oh, I've put 46, it's 45. Whoops. Whoops. That's wrong. Shouldn't have done that. I've just done the test wrong. Yeah, 44, it goes to 45. Whoops. Oh, I've done it wrong on this one as well. No, I did it r right on that one, I think. I was thinking, what the hell have I done wrong there? That's, that seems right. Seems like I can mess this up at any stage. Oops. Uh, where are we? Okay, yeah, so that has passed those two tests. Is there a nicer way to write that? Is there, a, is there any nicer way to write this? Or is this just, that's the simplest I can make it? Because now I've got it working, I could refactor this and make it work. I mean, what's the uh, what's the another way of writing this? Let's find another way of writing it. So that that works, we'll keep that. That could be it. Um, here's another way of doing it. Um, we could exclusive all of these together. <laughs> we could exclusive all of them together and then shift right by eight. How about that? Because if you exclusive or two values which are identical, uh, you will get zero. So if the high byte is the same, when we exclusive all those together, we'll get a zero in the high byte, and we shift it right, eight bytes. So we're just looking at the high byte now. So we should end up with a zero in there um, if we didn't cross a page boundary, and we'll end up with a one in there if we did cross a page boundary. So. Maybe that's a different way of doing it. And that works as well. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, which one do you prefer? I, I kind of like that one. 
I think because uh, the other one's got a comparison and this one's got a shift. I don't know if one of these is faster or if the exclusive or is slower, but um, that's that's one way of doing it. So there you go. There's more than one way to skin a cat, that proves anyway. So what about if we do the absolute Y? Let's take this code. Let's use our exclusive or method. Absolute Y. Here's the same one down here. So we can just do the same thing. And I'm just giving it a name so we so we know that rather than just I could just plonk that right in there into there, but this way is saying, hey look, you crossed a page boundary, then it takes another cycle. So let's see if that one fixes that. And it does. And uh there must be another one in here. It's indirect Y, it is. So yeah, so I just really goofed this up um, previously. Goofed it. And is this going to fix this one as well? And it does. There you go. So thank you to Super Kaplunk for pointing that out. That was completely wrong. And now I hope it's completely right. Unless I've, there's another one, some of these somewhere that I've messed up. But these. This is how we do all the dressing modes. So by having it in one place, I've refactored them all. So that's not that's not too bad. So um, that's all I'm going to fix this time. But there were some other notes. Uh, I put the note from Super Kapunk in there. I made a little issues thing. I know you can have issues in GitHub, which I might start using. Uh, but that's basically fixed. I can take that out. Well, I'll, I'll edit that later, but I'll, I'll remove this line. Yeah, there were a few other things that probably need tidying up as well. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to do those this time though. Uh, the break command is breaks and goes to an interrupt, but uh, I think at the moment ours will break even when, even if interrupts are disabled. So there's an interrupt disable flag. Now we're not reading that here, notice we set it, but if interrupt disable is set, surely break shouldn't do anything. And then there's a big question about, well, what do you do if you can't do anything? Do you just skip over this code and ignore it? Or do you have to move forward by one with the program counter? So we don't exactly know what happens there because there is this weird two byte thing going on with break breaks, a really weird instruction. And, and it's not apparently not used very often in actual programs. It's mainly used for debugging, but you still got to support it correctly if you you know want a program to work because your program might have debugging in it. There was another note I made, PLP clears the break flag when executed. I don't think that's right. Um, because we do this pop processor status from the stack. And I think in here, it always clears these flags, which is what the thing I said was possibly true, but I don't know that that's a true, that should happen either. Because if you did a pull processor status when you were inside a break, you would clear the break for flag. So I don't think that that's right. So that could be incorrect. And yeah, that's a possibility that that's incorrect. One last thing to just try is it's the again it's the test that I can't leave in but we do have our test program still here class 2 m 5s test program let's just see that that's still uh, see this freezes on success but I think yeah it did finish it must take actually take quite a while to run that I didn't realize that um, so that has succeeded so that still works which is good Excellent, so that's one more problem fixed with the clock cycle counting, quite like that. And uh, the only other thing I was gonna say is uh, the other day, uh, I did have a go. I actually got out uh, a real Commodore 64. In fact, I've still got it set up on the desk and there it is. And let's just see what we get. Yeah, there you go. So I, I was actually gonna try this out and see if I could work out some of those PLP problems and what happens with break and stuff like that. But I don't have any way of getting software into this correctly. This is actually yeah, a real Commodore 64. Um, I don't have any way of getting any software into this correctly at the moment. So I did have, I've actually got an assembler program that I tried to use and it was just a miserable failure. It was really weird. It worked like a, a weird basic program. Um, it turned out in the end I found out it was actually written in basic. Um, it was very weird. So I tried that out 
In fact, oh, let me get the cassette. It was actually this Assemble 64 by Interceptor Software, and I tried to get this to work, and I couldn't do what I wanted to do because I couldn't get the break command. There was no way of actually issuing, uh, there was no way of like loading high and low bytes and stuff that I knew of. It's only got a one page documentation, so it didn't really work, which was a bit of a shame um, because I really was uh, up for actually getting that to work. If I get a way of loading software onto this Commodore 64, then I'll be able to do that, but I couldn't do it. So let's just see if Nemesis will load. I don't know, maybe it will. It's good that I've actually got a real 65, well, there is a real 6510 in here, or it's an 8510, I think. So it's good that I've got one of these, but I, I've not really got a good way of like testing stuff out on it because I haven't got any way of writing machine language on it. Um, I mean, there is loads of programs, but getting them onto here is the hard part from the PC, uh, unless you've got some kind of cartridge or interface or something or some way of getting between the two. It's not like this has got a network port in it or anything like that. Yes, and it is stretched, but that's just because it's going through a, it's going from composite to a little converter box that's going into the USB and that's just stretching it. So that's supposed to be 4.3. I don't remember. I've, there are some games I've got that won't load. This could be one of them. Anyway, I'm going I'm to just paste in the video I made of me trying to get the assembler program working. And then you can watch the horror you can watch what I went through trying to work out this uh, program from 1983. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like Nemesis might be one of the ones that doesn't work. Don't know. Maybe it doesn't work on the 64C. Maybe that's the problem. Who knows? So at the end of this video, there's, you can watch me fail trying to get this weird assembler program working and not managing it. So uh, if you want to watch that, enjoy it. And if not, you can end the video now. <laughs>
I don't know if you can even get this on the camera, it's so small, it's on here, but you basically, you write this like basic, oh my God. Right, was that it? That was very quick. Did the tape stop? There we go. So uh, it looks terrible on here, by the way, because I'm, I'm doing, I've got a uh, composite output. So how the hell do I use this then? So it says, Assembler 64 makes full use of the 64 screen editing capabilities. Excellent. Each mnemonic is given a line number, allowing lines to be edited, listed, deleted, and inserted. Okay, just like basic. This is weird. Line numbers are also used in all branch and jump instructions. Oh, so it's not really like, it's a weird assembly language, this. Uh, and it gives a little example. Um, example of program jumps using line numbers are shown using 150. Right. So I think what it's telling me is, let's just see if I can do, oh, it's, it's, it's weird. It's not like, it's not like what I'd expect. So it reckons I can do a line number and I can do LDA and it's got an example here of equals one. Is that immediate? So I think that's like load one into the accumulator. So you press enter and that's in there and I can list that like it's a basic program. Yep, there it is. Line 100, LDA equals one. And then I can store accumulator. Oh, so you can actually create variables as well. So I can say, let's, let's say line 50, I can create a variable and assign it to something. This is weird. This is not what I was expecting. Um, and then I can load that. So I can do, go to 110. I can do store accumulator with my variable. And instead of a comma, uh, I don't know. It's got a comma and then X is like, like, is that like X offset. I don't know, maybe I can do that. So that will store 100 into the accumulator. Load the accumulator one and store 100 into the accumulator. Can I, do you actually just run this like a normal program? What the hell is this all about? No. Um, what do you do? I assume you have to assemble this. Uh, if the go is, what? Example program jumps include using line was shown in 150. If the go is not included, then a jump to an absolute memory address will be assumed. That doesn't make any sense to me. What's the go? Go. Uh, use the labels, the, the use of labels in 100, 110, 170 must always consist of two letters. Okay, so it's saying that variable had to have at least, almost always consist of two letters and may be used as numeric substitutes. What? This is, this is, the, this is was not what I was expecting. It's got that var thing, it says it's right. It says I can only use two though, I can't use three, um, which is up here, this thing, uh, this thing here. It's saying var, saying they can be only be two letters. That's odd. Um, uh, simple addition with labels is possible. Oh God, this isn't similar language at all. I don't know what this. I don't know what this is. I was not expecting, not expecting this at all. Um, type assemble. Oh, followed immediately by a starting location. Default is four nine one five two. Code is always assembled at that location. Oh, right, okay. Assemble, Avengers Assemble, let's do it. Uh, wow, illegal mnemonic in 50. <laughs> okay, so it really does have to be two letters. So let's call it VA equals 100. Assemble. Wow. Oh, it's getting a bit further. Oh, is this going to work? Assembly complete. Cool. Uh, this actually might be quite useful. 
I don't know. Um, so I've assembled it now. I'm glad they put the instructions in, otherwise I'd be screwed. Um, assemble, followed me by location. Default is 49152. Um, it did, it says, can, oh yeah, starting from 49152 to 49156. So the program's in memory right now. Uh, code is always assembled, but may be, but may as explained be constructed elsewhere in RAM. Assembly may be aborted with run stop at any point. Oh, assembly 64 works all times in base 10. However, two commands exist to work in base 16. So it's just base 10 to start with. Uh, okay. And, oh, we can save the disk with this as well. Now that's the other thing. I do actually have a disk drive. So if this gets a bit complicated, we could save it to disk, but maybe we don't have to bother. You do D save. Um, loading and saving camera. Load test, save test, D load test, D save test. That's weird. I'm assuming that you're saving the program test or something. List, list output to screen. L, L list outputs to the printer. <laughs> Do not use spaces in assembler 64 instructions. Any spaces needed will be inserted automatically. Any others will confuse the program. I put some spaces in. Didn't I? Uh, let's take that one out. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. That. Oh, didn't like that. Yeah, okay. What, what's to be confused about here? No, just put it back in anyway. Well, it didn't seem that confused by it. So, let's see then. I'm going to move slightly away from the microphone because... Uh, um, that's the computer's in a funny place. Well, I'm quite glad it loaded. Um, so, given these instructions that I've now got to remember, because this is not what I was expecting, uh, can we actually run this program? And I think you run a basic, you run a machine code program on the C64 by just saying sys one, well, you sys and then the address that you want to run from. So that'll just run the code that's there. Uh, except maybe, I think maybe I should put an RTS. Uh, I don't know if this how this is going to work. I, I think I might just crash it. <laughs> I think I might have to try this. I think this is just going to execute these three instructions and then run off into funny memory and then just start executing crap and then crash. Uh, 49152, because I think when you do this sys, it does a jump to subroutine and you're expected to RTS at the end. Let's just run it and just see if I crash the computer. Could happen. Oh except that's not what I can do. So, really? I thought sys was the way you run. I thought that was the way you run a machine code program on C64, unless this assembler's disabled it. It's not sys? Yeah, so this is not really that clear on how you actually run the program. Is it run? Because normally you'd do this you do this sys and then you'd say the address of the machine code program you want to run. That's how you do it in basic anyway, but it this isn't this might have unloaded the basic ROM for all I know. It might not it might just be doing something else, but it's not run. Is it that go? It mentioned go. No. Um maybe you can't this would be a bit weird. So you can assemble in here, but you can't actually run anything? Is that actually Type assemble, followed immediately by the starting location. Code is always assembled, but may, as be explained, be constructed run elsewhere. Um, and then it goes on about base conversion. Um, you list to list it, which is what it says. We've already done that. That's cool. Um, yeah, you can do everything but run it. For any reason you happen to break out of the program, Run stop no, works normally for stopping, listing, and assembly, but accidents do happen. You can re enter without damage to data by go to 200. God, that makes no sense. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's great, this, but I don't know how to run the program. I mean, there's really no way of knowing unless it'll tell me. I mean, can you just do. Uh, is it like. Go 50, because that's like what the way it lists it. No, so that's a syntax error. 
I mean, so you could save this to disk, and then you could reload it with the actual basic ROM later on, but at the moment, there is actually no way. Damn. I'd just like to be able to run this, and then I could write a little program that could test some stuff, but what the devil is this all about? This is like super not helpful. I doubt I'll find anything about this on the internet. This Assembler 64 by Interceptor Software. Probably not the most popular thing in the world. Type assemble, followed by the starting location. Code is assembled at this location, but may as explained be constructed to run elsewhere in RAM. Assembly may be aborted with run stop at any point. But the, you can't run it and sys doesn't work here. Which is rubbish. This just means I'll have to reset the computer, I'll have to save it to disk and reset the computer to actually try this out. Which means this is going to take absolutely forever if I actually want to do anything with it. You must be able to run this because it's in memory. So uh, why wouldn't I be able to run the program? I mean, I think I need um, an RTS there. Whoops. RTS. I think that's what I need. Assemble. Does it actually tell? Maybe there's a help command. I don't know. Assembling. Yep. Yep. Come on. Right. So it took that extra instruction. Is there a help? No. There's no run. No. Go. That's not a command. Uh, sys doesn't work. Because this isn't basic, this is like they've written their own. They might have disabled the basic ROM here. Uh, if that's the case, that's why sys doesn't work, because I think sys is a basic command. Um, I don't know of any way to run this. So this would have to be saved to disk. It's in RAM at this 49152, and I can't run it. Um, that's really quite annoying. Um, so the best I could do is like try and write a program that could test something that I wanted to know. So, I mean, it could be worth doing that, but it'd be really nice to do it without actually having to reload the computer. So what I wanted to do really was test that what happened to the processor status after we did PHP, um, because yeah, it was really to test out what was going on uh, here when it was talking about this, like when you do PHP, oh sorry, two instructions, PLP and RTI, pull a byte from the stack, set all the flags, they ignore bits four and five. Now if we could write a little machine code program, we could actually find out what it did, rather than just guessing. And right now we're just guessing. But um, I'd have to do it, um, I'd have to do it by writing this assembling it, saving it and running it and hope it works uh, because I could run it and then I could push bytes into memory and then I could peek the bytes in basic. Um, so it might be worth trying to do that, but there's really, I mean, this might be really tedious, but maybe we'll have a go. Um, let's just see. So what we want to do for PHP, um, let's just see. So PLP pulls processor status, pulls an 8-bit value from the stack and into the processor flags. The flags will take on new states as determined by the pull value. So it just says everything's set from the stack, which is fine. But this is saying it's not. So in effect, what I could do is do a PHP, push processor status, and then a PLP. And what would that really show me? I mean, because if they ignored bits four and five, they'd be the same anyway, which is the break bit and the unused flag. Um, so I don't know if that would really tell me anything. I mean, we could push the processor states to the stack. We could verify that these two bits are set, which is one thing. Um, we could do that. Um, but then really want to know what happens when you pull the bits off. What do you do with bits four, five and four? Yeah, I kind of feel like the program we really need is we we break. That's the first that's the first line. 
we break and then after the break so we're in at this point oh we need a knob after the break that's the other thing uh, because the break takes this weird extra instruction um, oh no break goes to the interrupt handler so that would be the other problem is like in this weird assembler how do I even set the interrupt handler uh, and the answer is I don't know because I can store an address in the interrupt handler store an address in the interrupt handler, call the break instruction, it will go to the interrupt handler and then I'd have to write code at that address is that even possible with this assembler? I, did, I wasn't expecting it to be like a basic program I think the answer is I can't do it with this I'm not sure that I can put, I can put something initially at a place but I can't put it in an actual place in memory I could set the interrupt location I could break and how do I put code at the interrupt location using this weird basic thing really need a proper assembler like one that doesn't do this crazy stuff I don't think there's any way to force other than the initial program I don't think there's any way to force a piece of the program to be at a specific point I mean there might be but it's not in the instructions I might even search for this interceptor software <laughs> uh, never gonna find anything about this assembler 64 let nobody's used this program ever oh believe it or not there's actually a Wikimedia Commons picture you know I can believe this I think years ago I did this <laughs> there's actually this is what I found there's actually a Wikimedia Commons picture and it's actually my box because I I took the scan I took a picture of this because there was no pictures of this on the internet and you can see it's got the same like scuff marks and, and crap all over it that's pretty funny actually that is pretty funny oh this is weird someone's saying I'm looking for the tool assembler 64 <laughs> interceptor software hey I've got it it's on cassette I'm looking to pay a good price for this title if someone has it <laughs> It's a gaping hole uh, in what is to be a complete interceptor. Oh, right. I had it and sold it. Oh, there you go. Look, people had it. I also had it. Here is a tap of the original. Yeah, there's a little copy of this online. Yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Someone's actually looking for this. That is crazy. Uh, well, I'm not looking for it because I can't use it because there's no instructions for it. That's really terrible. Damn. Oh wow, this is unbelievable. Someone's actually, the person who actually posting that was actually looking for and they posted the picture of my box. There you go. I, I think they didn't know this existed until I put the picture online. I might be the only person who's ever got this. <laughs> That's really funny. That was in 2017 as well. Unbelievable. Um, I'd really like someone to tell me how to use it. That'd be great. Is there a way? Can, is there anything I can do with this? Oh well, I tried. I tried, and I'm afraid I failed. If I could get, I can get an actual cartridge or something that could actually assemble stuff on the 64, or I had a way of transferring something I assembled on the PC onto the 64. I think I'd be able to do this, but right now, can't do it. Sorry, assemble the 64. You have not been any use to me at all. And if I can think of some use, I would do it. But at the moment, I'm getting nothing. <laughs>